Okay, lesson three. We what we what we have done so far, back in lesson one, what you guys did is you did a whole number divided by a fraction. Lesson two was a fraction divided by a whole number. Or I think I have it reversed. I think right. Yeah. Day, lesson one was fraction divided by whole number, and yesterday was whole number divided by fraction. Lesson three is fraction divided by fraction. Now the way that the state wants us to model this is what's new to you. So what we're going to do, and then what they do to start off, if you go to the first page, at the back of the first page, the way in which they model it, they're going to set up by example using whole numbers. So what they do to model this is they use whole numbers to start. They give you one where you know the answer right away, 12 divided by 3, which is 4. Here's how Common Core wants you to model it. We're going to start off by making a bar diagram or a fraction bar of 12 pieces. So let's do that. Count your boxes after you're done to be sure because sometimes you can make a mistake. Now there's my 12, okay? The way they want you to think about 12 divided by 3 is how many groups of 3 are in 12? Now we know the answer is 4, right? Here's how they want you to model it. Once I have my 12 boxes, each box has a value of how much? Each box has a value of how much? Stretch. Let's put a little one in each box. And that's now showing 12 full units, right? How many groups of 3 are in 12? You've already said it is 4. So to model that, we can use a bracket. We can circle. I'm going to use a bracket. That's a group of 3. That's one group. There's my second group of three. That makes two. That makes three. That makes four. Do I have any left over? So my answer is my whole number four. And you can see how this model is going to carry over to when we now do fractions. Now the bottom half, they kind of they kind of coach you through this already, but another way to reword 12 divided by 3, you can see it in, in word problems many different ways. If we divide 12 into three groups of equal size, what's the size of each group? You can see it this way. If we divide 12 into groups of size 3, how many groups would we have? Or you could do chickens in a cage if chickens are in, uh, put in uh, a total of 12 chickens or put in three chickens at a time. How many cages do you need? Obviously four, or three flowers per pot would make four flower pots. So all of these are good. Now we're going to go on to the next example, and here's where kids kind of got hung up a little bit. And then once they saw it, they are like, oh, okay, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Eight ninths divided by two ninths. Forget about the answer for right now. Let's just model it. They've already made the fraction bar for you, and if you count these, how many boxes do you have? How many you got? Nine, right? Here's the question period two got hung up. Period three, not so much. How much? How, we go back to this. Each box is worth one, right? How much is each box worth here? Crickets. Think about it. What is this fraction bar representing? This is one whole unit broken up nine ways. So each box has to have a value of what? One. 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 It can't be one because that would represent nine. Two. It's not nine. Two. It's got to represent one. Let me, let me restate it this way. Kevin, I'll go to you in a minute. All of the boxes, if I add all of the boxes, it has to equal one. 
So therefore, each box has to be worth what? And it's a key concept because it's going to carry over for everyone that we model. Okay, Kev. Each one is one ninth. I want you to write it in just so you don't forget for now. Later on, you won't need to do it. But do it for now because it's going to help us to visualize how to do this division expression. You have to remember that the fraction bar in its entirety is expressing 1. From here to here is 1. In order for that to work out properly, each one's got to be worth 1 ninth. So if I add 1 ninth plus 1 ninth plus 1 ninth plus 1, you wind up with 9 ninths, which is 1. Or another way to look at it is 1 ninth times 9 boxes is 9 over 9, which is 1. All right, now we'll go back to the example. We're going to shade 8 out of 9. Each time you shade it, it's worth a ninth. That's 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 3 ninths, 4 ninths, 5 ninths, 6 ninths, 7 ninths, 8 ninths. That's all I'm going to shade. That's now representing 8 ninths. So now you got to think, how many groups of two ninths are in eight ninths? Because we've given each one a value of one ninth, how many are two boxes worth? Gav? Um, two okay, so we're going to put groups of two ninths. There's a group of two ninths. There's a group of two ninths. There's three groups of two ninths. And there's four. I only shaded eight out of nine, so I can't I can't bracket any more. One group, two groups, three groups, four groups. We've created four groups of two ninths. Therefore, eight ninths divided by two ninths is four. That's our answer. Get it? Questions? Let's do 9 twelfths divided by 3 twelfths. Okay, we'll make the fraction bar model first. How many boxes do I need? Seal. Let's do it. Double check and make sure you count it correctly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 boxes. Our think statement is what we're really thinking about is how many 3 twelfths are in 9 twelfths. Well, we've got to first start off by shading the right amount of boxes. How many boxes do I need to shade? Delane. Right. My first fraction is going to tell me how many boxes to shade. So we're going to shade 9. Let's do it. And I'll just ask you that same question as I did in the previous exercises. Each box has a value of how much now? Karen. All right, good. One twelfth. We need to group them in groups of three twelfths. So they are in groups of three. Here we go. There's one group. And two. And we have exactly 3. Therefore, 9 twelfths divided by 3 twelfths is the whole number 3. And that is our answer. Seals. That's coming up. The question was, what if it doesn't have, what if it doesn't go evenly? Well, what, let's say if I had told you 10 twelfths. You'd have one left over. That's going to come up in, in the next problem, as you'll see. And since you ask, here it is. 
Let's get rid of the preliminaries first. How many boxes do we need for 7 ninths divided by 3 ninths? Jen? 9. Do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Shade how many? J. Shade seven. First fraction tells us how many shade. Okay, so that model is now showing our seven ninths, and we have to figure out how many three ninths are in seven ninths. Well, here we go. Each one's worth a ninth. So there's one ninth, two ninths, three ninths. That's one group. Two groups. Guess what? I don't have enough for third group. So I now know there's a remainder. I got two complete groups, and I got one shaded piece out of how many remaining? Matthew, our answer is two and one third. The kids like this because they can see it. It becomes easier for them when they say, "Oh, okay, I got two complete ones. I don't have I don't have enough shaded boxes for for three whole, but I got one out of three to make my two and one third. Yeah. If there wasn't those two boxes at the end, and like there was one left over still, then it's one out of four. Well, you can't because it doesn't model that way. I'm not going to model that way because then you'd be showing if you had everything shaded, you'd have eight eighths. And then if I'm dividing, in this case, let's say five eighths into eight eighths, you're still going to wind up with a remainder of three eighths. You'll get one and three eighths. Okay? All right, now what I want to do is, I, oh, we have to do this page first. Brandon started to make the connection that when R did not, we've already done these, by the way. If you're looking at these, we've done them. That's a quick recap. When we did this, we got four, we got three, and we got two and one third. Brandon made the connection that if our denominators are the same, which they are, we can get our answer by doing what? Nick. And that's the shortcut. If our denominators are the same, we could simply do denominator, I'm sorry, numerator, divided by numerator, 8 divided by 2, and we get 4. 9 divided by 3, as long as our denominators are the same, and they are, is 3. And 7 divided by 3 is 2 and a half, and in case you don't see it, I'll do it long division-wise just to show you. 3 goes into 7 how many times at least? What is 3 times 2J? What's our remainder? Did you guys learn in fifth grade that the remainder becomes the numerator? And the divisor outside the house is the denominator, two and one third. I found maybe half the class learned that last year and half didn't. A lot of them learned it as if you put it down as two, R, one, remainder one. But if you had to express the remainder as a fraction, it is remainder over divisor. Okay. Now, what I want to do before I let you guys go into your groups, oh, one more, two more things, one more thing, then the other thing. Go to this example. This is exercise one. Some of my, some of the kids today got hung up on this and how to write this as a division expression. It's asking how many fourths are in three fourths. Does anybody want to come up to the board and do it? And I need you to think because before you do it, look back at the way it worked out. Here they gave you the expression and you had to come up with this. Now they're giving you the words and you got to kind of do it in reverse. Lil, come on up. Sure. It's going to go, you're going to put it right here. 
just how you're going to write that. It, from, you're translating it from words. Who agrees? Hands up. Yes? How many one-fourths are in three-fourths? Does not get written this way. You got to be careful because the order does matter. Okay, so you found a mistake, right? Flip it. Go ahead. That's correct. This is now saying how many one fourths are in three fourths. So just be careful with that. Okay? Fill this out. Fraction bar is going to have how many pieces? Just say it out loud. Okay. I'm going to shade how many? And I'm going to put them in groups of one fourth. So how many total groups do I have? Three, right? So it's it's in a group all by itself. Therefore, three fourths divided by one fourth is three. And the numerator denominator trick does work. Denominators are the same, so three divided by one is three. And I want to show you something. Just to be aware of. Example two, exercise one, which is not on your sheet, but I rewrote it here. Rewrite nine twelfths divided by three twelfths. You've already done it. What was the answer? Look back if you have to. Just rewrite it here because I want to show. I want to make a. I'm going to make a connection here, or you're going to make a connection. But when we did do it, nine twelfths divided by three twelfths. What? What did you get? Okay, ready. When you look at this problem, and you look at this problem, do you see anything interesting? Matthew. Okay, so you're looking at this and this. You're half right. And then if you multiply the bottoms by three, you So you took this you took the roundabout way, but let me ask you this. Three fourths and nine twelfths are they're equivalent fractions. One fourth and three twelfths are They are also equivalent fractions. The point being that if you create an equivalent fraction for each one, the answer is unchanged because you got three here and you got three here. Here, I'll give you another example. Um, four sixths, you don't have to write this, just look. Four sixths divided by two sixths. Use the numerator trick. What's the answer? Shout it out. Two. two. I'm going to simplify four sixths. It gets scaled down to what? Third. Four sixths does not. No. Two sixths six gets scaled down to? Okay, Pete. Third. Denominator is the same. What's two divided by one? The answer is unchanged whenever you do the same problem with equivalent fractions. Brandon. We're going to do that next. I want to skip right now because I think this you'll be able to do on your own, but I do want to take you to exercise three because you have an improper fraction and I'm going to give you an opportunity to get a, a ticket here for a question I'm going to ask you. It's the page right after the next one. It's 9 fourths divided by 3 fourths. And you could probably do the numerator trick in your head and it'll still work, but let's hold off on that for a minute. First of all, how do we rewrite this as a division using words? What? How many what into what? 
Okay, Leah. Okay. okay. How many three fourths in nine fourths? Start off with that. Here comes your bonus. You ready? We have to come up with a fraction bar that shows nine fourths. How many boxes do I need? Okay. Let's try it. Make four boxes. Therefore, each box would be worth one fourth. All together, they're four fourths. That's not nine fourths. Now what? If each box, let me rephrase it this way, if each box has to be worth one fourth, how many boxes do I need? Brandon, I need nine. They're still worth one fourth. But by making nine of them, I've made nine fourths. And I gotta shade all of them too. The hard part's done because now you're gonna just do as you've always done. They're in groups of three fourths. There's three fourths, there's three fourths, and there's three fourths. lost. How many three-fourths are in nine-fourths? And our answer is three. Okay? All right, so you have now seen all of the different examples that you're going to come across as you do this. So you guys can group up and finish it up on your own. Okay, so here are the solutions for the remaining problems which everybody's doing for homework. When you rewrite it as a division expression using words, you're trying to figure out how many two-fifths are in four-fifths. Our fraction bar model is going to show five pieces of which I'm going to, I'm going to shade four. Each one has a value of one fifth, so I've got to put them into groups of two fifths. That's going to make one group, and then it's going to make two groups. And this is essentially down here the same thing. And our answer is two. And then for some classes, we did do exercise three in class, showing how it's going to work with an improper fraction. So I will just leave that there for you to look at if you want to hit pause. And I'll go on to exercise four. How many two-eighths to seven-eighths? Think statement is kind of the same thing. Some kids will variate here, and here they'll write it, they'll write this out as when you do it as a division expression, they'll write out into words seven eighths divided by two eighths, and then the think statement is how many blank in blank. So I'm just going to leave this as is for right now and go right to the fraction bar model. I'm going to need a fraction bar that is going to show eighths. Each one has a value of one eighth. 
and I'm going to shave seven of them. I have to put them into groups of two eighths. That's one set. Two. Three. I definitely have three. And then I have one half of a fourth. So my answer is three and one half. Okay, exercise five is another one with an improper fraction. Now I'll show you how some kids may want to do this. They'll just simply write it out as 13 tenths divided by 2 tenths. Now my fraction bar has to show 13 pieces because some kid's going to want to do 10. Problem with doing 10, and I'll show here in a minute. If I do 10 and each one's worth 1 tenth, I wind up with 10 tenths, and that is not the same as 13 tenths. So I do need three more. Each one still has a value of 1 tenth. There's 13 of them, so we have 13 tenths. And i got to shade all of them. And we're trying to figure out how many 2 tenths are in 13 tenths. Shade all 13, and you got to put them and bracket them in groups of 2. I have six complete. And half of a seventh, so my answer is six and a half. Now the area model is just a different way to show it, but essentially it's the same thing. And finally, my last one. Uh, once again, I, I could just write this out as how many, or uh, 11 ninths divided by 3 ninths, but I'm going to skip that for now and go right to the fraction bar model. I'm going to need 11 pieces. And I'm going to need to shade all 11. And I'm going to group them. And I'm going to group them in groups of three ninths, but let me finish. I'll do this first. How many three ninths are in 11 ninths? I'm going to put them into groups of three ninths. And what I wind up having here is three complete groups. With two out of three, because there's another one here, imaginary, that's unshaded. So it's two, three and two thirds being our answer. They further model it showing a number line. Some kids would like, sometimes they like to use the number line. We're kind of going to show a little bit more of how the number line works tomorrow. Um, but that's just another way that you can express the same idea. And that concludes lesson three.